The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. For the past three weeks, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has been offering members of this radio audience the famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. And each week, as soon as the program ended, listeners began phoning their Equitable Society representative, asking to bring around copies of this chart. Tonight, I'm going to suggest that you put off your phone call till next week. This Christmas Eve, Equitable Society representatives like yourselves are busy trimming trees, laying out presents, and putting up Christmas holly wreaths and mistletoe. But next week, be sure to call an Equitable representative about the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. I'll tell you more about it in about 14 minutes. Tonight's FBI file, The Return of St. Nick. The United States is a young country in the family of nations, but already it has its share of national holidays, holidays that belong to these 48 states. Those holidays are spaced from February to November, and of every one of those days, it can be said that they belong to the people of the United States exclusively. But there is one legal holiday observed in this country that does not belong to us exclusively any more than it belongs to any nation. It, too, celebrates a birthday. A birthday which has come to mean much in the hearts of millions of people. A birthday we call Christmas. Tonight's file opens in an FBI field office located in a large eastern city. It is two days before Christmas, and Special Agent Jim Taylor has just entered the office of Agent in Charge, Sheridan. Morning, Jim. Morning, sir. I've got my report here on the Henderson case. You're fine. Just leave it on my desk. All right. Uh, you're officially on leave, aren't you, Jim? Yes, sir, as of this morning. But I wanted to hand this in before I left. <laughs> Going out of town for the holiday? That's right, sir. I'm flying home this afternoon. Oh, well, how long since you've been home on Christmas? Oh, not since before the war. Well, have a nice trip, Jim. Thank you, sir. And a very Merry Christmas. And the same to you, sir. Mister? Yes, what is it, son? Where's the FBI? Right down there at the end of the hall. Thank you. Uh, wait a minute. Huh? What do you want with the FBI, son? Well, we've got some trouble, and I thought they could help us. Well, I'm a special agent. You think I could help? Are you a G-man? <laughs> That's right. What kind of trouble have you got? Well, Santa Claus is missing. Is it? Well, now that is trouble. His name is Mr. Norton, and we've got to find him. We looked all over. Who looked all over? All of us older fellas at the settlement house. We went every place. All of you older fellas, huh? Yeah. How old are you, son? I'll be ten next month. I see. Can you help us, mister? Well, I don't know, but I'll tell you what we'll do first. Let's go downstairs and get an ice cream soda, and you can tell me the whole story. <laughs> This is the settlement house, Mr. Taylor. Oh, it's a nice-looking building. Here, we go in this door. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Williams' office isn't there. Gee, he's a nice man. I'm sure he is. Uh, this door here? Yeah. Oh, 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 but first we must knock. Oh, I, I, I didn't know that. Come in. Hello, Mr. Williams. Hello, Eddie. This is Mr. Taylor. Well, how do you do, Mr. Taylor? Glad to meet you, sir. Mr. Taylor's a G-man. He is? Yeah, I got him to help us find Mr. Norton. 
I see. Well, I've got to run now. Choir practice starts in 10 minutes. All right, Eddie, you go ahead. I'll explain everything to Mr. Taylor. See you later, Eddie. Okay. I'm sorry you were bothered by Eddie, Mr. Taylor. Oh, no bother at all, Mr. Williams. Eddie made me feel genuinely concerned. I'm sure he did. We're all very concerned about Mr. Norton. Well, if there's anything at all I can do, unofficially, of course, I'd be very happy to. That's very nice of you. What happened to this Mr. Norton? Uh, who is he? Well, Pop Norton has worked here at the settlement house longer than anyone can remember. I see. How old would you say he is? I guess around 60 or 65. Mm -hmm. And his job here? Nothing in particular. He did odd jobs around the house and returned for his room and board and a few dollars a month. The biggest job he had was being Santa Claus every year at the Christmas party. Mm -hmm. Every child in the house was crazy about him, and he loved every one of them in return. And he said he was missing. Is that true? Yes. I have no idea where he could have gone. Well, what made him leave? That's the odd part of it. No one seems to know. Yesterday, he sent one of the boys in with a note to me saying he was leaving immediately. I see. I went to his room, and he was gone. I'm afraid it's not going to be much of a Christmas for the children without Pop. Mr. Williams, do you mind if I take a look around his room? Not at all. Maybe I can find something there that will lead us to where Santa Claus is hiding. Williams. Mm -hmm. May I see you for a moment? Christmas Certainly. Day. Keep singing, boys. Let's walk over here. When we were gonna say Did you find anything in Mr. Norton's room, Mr. Taylor? Not a thing, Mr. Williams. room was cleaned out. Tell me, what do you know about Mr. Norton? What did he do on his day off? Who were his friends? Well, he never took a day off that I can remember. No? The only pleasure he got out of life besides serving the kids was reading. Mm -hmm. He always had three or four books from the library down the street. Now, I have a hunch Mr. Norton isn't going to be too difficult to find. Why do you say that? Well, from what you've told me, he's a man of about 60 with no outside interests. The only things he likes are reading and children. That kind of a man doesn't usually run very far. Hmm. Uh, pardon me. Certainly. All right, boys, you can rest a while. Sorry, right, Mr. Taylor. Please go on. Well, I was about to say that I think he's probably still here in the neighborhood. Mr. Taylor! Mr. Taylor! Oh, hello, Eddie. Oh, excuse me, sir. All right, Eddie. Mr. Taylor, I've been working on the case. Oh, good for you, son. What did you find? Well, I spoke to a boy who saw Pop just before he left. Well, that's fine. What did he say? He told me that he was playing with Pop yesterday when two ladies came into the gym. Two ladies? Yeah. Pop saw them, and he went and hid in the closet until they went away. When was this, Eddie? Just before milk. Hmm. Uh. Just before milk? Well, that's at 4 o'clock. They all get milk and cookies. Oh, I see. Well, thanks, Eddie. You've been a big help. You're welcome, Mr. Taylor. Oh, now, you stay here a minute, Eddie. I've got another job for you. Gee, thanks. Oh, Mr. Williams, do you know the two women who came here yesterday? Well, one of them was a Mrs. Chester. She's on the Board of Governors. She brought a wealthy friend of hers to try to interest her in contributing to the house. I see. Do you know the friend's name? No, I don't. But I can find it out from Mrs. Chester. Oh, I'd appreciate you doing that. Now, Eddie... You ready for your assignment? Yes, sir, anything. All right. I want you to go to the library down the street and see if Mr. Norton is there. Yes, sir. And if he's not there, wait around for him. I think he might come in for some new books. Well, Mr. Sheridan, uh, can I see you for a minute? Certainly, Jim. Come on in. Thank you. I thought you'd be on your way home by now. Yes, so did I. What happened? Well, when I left your office this morning, a young boy stopped me in the hall and asked for some help. Well, what kind of help? Well, he belongs to the Murray Street Settlement House. It seems that their Santa Claus has disappeared. What? He wanted us to find him. I, I went back with him and talked to the head of the house. What's the story? Well, this Mr. Norton has worked at the Settlement House for about 30 years. Yesterday, he suddenly quit. Why? Nobody seems to know. Except that he saw two women come in and hid in a closet until they left. Then he packed all his belongings and disappeared. I see. I know this isn't our case, sir, but, well, I'd like to ask a favor. What is it? We have no picture of this man, sir, and I'd like to have an artist go over to the settlement house, talk to the kids, and make up a composite picture of Mr. Norton. What do you want that for? Oh, I have a hunch Mr. Norton is still in the neighborhood. I'd like to circulate the picture and see if we can't get him back to the settlement house in time to be Santa Claus again this year. What about your trip home, Jim? Oh, it can wait a day. I don't mind. Well, you go ahead. We'll find an artist, and more than that, you can use any facilities we've got. Now, thanks very much, sir. Excuse me. Sheridan speaking. Yes, 
Is Mr. Taylor there? Uh, yes, just a moment. It's for you, Jim. Oh, thanks. Hello. Hello, Mr. Taylor. I've got that information for you. Oh, fine. The woman with Mrs. Chester yesterday was a Mrs. Norman Montgomery. She lives at 310 North Jackson Avenue. Mrs. Norman Montgomery, 310... North Jackson Avenue. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Williams. She must have been the one Pop was afraid of. Oh, why do you say that? Well, Mrs. Chester has been on friendly terms with Pop for 15 years. Oh, I see. Oh, Mr. Williams, I'm sending an artist over. I I'd appreciate your letting him talk to all of the children so that he can make up a composite picture of Mr. Norton for us. We'll do anything we can to help, Mr. Taylor. Fine. He should be there in about, oh, half an hour. Oh, wait a minute. Eddie wants to talk to you. Okay. Here he is. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Hello, Eddie. What did you find out? Nothing. I went to the library like you said. But Pop never came. Well, you go back there, Eddie, and keep watching. Don't give up so easily. All right, Mr. Taylor. I'll go back right now. Atta boy. And you tell all of your friends up there that if it's at all possible for the FBI to find Santa Claus, we'll have him there tomorrow night for that party. Just a moment, please. Mrs. Montgomery? Yes? My name is Taylor. I'm from the FBI. Here are my credentials, ma'am. Oh, what can I do for you, Mr. Taylor? I'd like to come in and talk to you, if you don't mind. Come in. Thank you. What is it you want? I'm checking up on something, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. What sort of questions? Well, the first one would be... Were you at the Murray Street Settlement House yesterday? Why, yes, I was. With a Mrs. Chester. What does that to do with you? Oh, it has nothing to do with me, Mrs. Montgomery, but it might have something to do with a man who disappeared. What are you talking about? Well, this man who disappeared seemed to be afraid of being seen by you, according to what I can gather. What? Well, that's merely a theory, Mrs. Montgomery. Oh, why would he be afraid of me? Well, that's what we don't know. Who is this man? Oh, I have a composite picture made by one of the artists in our office. Here. <laughs> well, do you recognize him? Yes, I do. I haven't seen or talked with him in 30 years, but I know him. Who is he? He's my brother, Kenneth. Well, why would your own brother try to avoid you? He had a good reason. And what's that, Mrs. Montgomery? Kenneth is a common thief. We will return in just a moment to tonight's unofficial case from the files of your FBI. Now a Christmas message to parents from the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Fathers and mothers, on this night before Christmas, when the children are nestled all snug in their beds, when the stockings hang by the chimney with care, most of us realize, perhaps more strongly than at any other moment in the year, how much our children mean to us. At such a time, therefore, it is perhaps not unsuitable to discuss one of the most unselfish gifts a father can give to his family, the gift of life insurance. Life insurance is the loving father's way of making sure that his love will continue to watch over his family, no matter what may happen to him. Through life insurance, he makes certain that they will have an adequate income to live in comfort and security if he should be taken from them. To help you to determine what that income should be, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has published a special chart. It is called the Fact-Finding Chart for Fathers and Mothers. Its purpose is to help you make an accurate estimate of how much money your wife and children would require to carry them through the critical years until the youngest child finishes high school. You will be able to fill in this chart in five minutes because you are guided every step of the way by simple, easy to understand pictures. It is offered to all parents as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society without charge or obligation. Simply phone your nearby Equitable Society representative and ask him to bring you the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Or send a postcard addressed to the Equitable Society care of this ABC station. Your request will be forwarded to the nearest representative of the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. -E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. <laughs>
And now back to the FBI file, The Return of St. Nick. Hate is a vicious emotion which feeds upon itself and becomes greater as time goes on. It utterly destroys every person it possesses because it ruins their judgment by robbing them of their ability to see both sides of any question. Ultimately, it must warp the mind to such a degree that only a paramount shock can restore any degree of mental balance. As you can see from tonight's case from the files of your FBI, hate can make two members of the same family stop talking for 30 years for a period of time that is almost half the allotted time of man on Earth. That kind of hatred can consume a person, an industry, or a nation. For when a nation hates that way, the lone possible outlet is war. No one person can prevent a war between nations, but every one of you can make this a much merrier holiday season for yourself by resolving to live your life with full dignity as a human being and full respect for the rights of every other human being on the face of the earth. Tonight's file continues in the apartment of Mrs. Montgomery. Mrs. Montgomery, would you mind telling me why you accuse your brother of being a common thief? It's... It's a family matter, Mr. Taylor, and I'd rather not discuss it. I see. I assume that your business with me is concluded? Yes, I'm afraid it is, Mrs. Montgomery. And I'm sorry, because you're the one person I hope could help us find your brother. What do you want to find him for? To arrest him? Oh, no. No, until his disappearance, he worked at the Murray Street Settlement House. The children there love him. It's very important to them that he be found so he can play Santa Claus at their Christmas party. I haven't seen him for 30 years. I have no idea where he might be, and frankly, I don't care. Miss Montgomery, may I ask you again why you believe your brother is a thief? Well, I might as well tell you the whole story. If you'll promise to keep it confidential. I naturally want no publicity. Oh, I assure you, your story will not be publicized. Very well. More than 30 years ago, shortly after my father's death, Kenneth forged my name to a check for $10,000. How did you find out that he did it? It was perfectly obvious. He was an irresponsible young man. Shortly after the forgery, he suddenly had a lot of money. Did anyone ask him where he got it? Yes. Yes, he, he said he made it as a result of an investment. But patently, that was a lie. Did you discover the forgery yourself, Mrs. Montgomery? No, I didn't. The Mr. Bryant, who was the executor of my father's estate and an old friend of the family, has found out about it and came and told me. Mm -hmm. And uh, you never prosecuted the matter? No. Mr. Bryant convinced me that I shouldn't risk ruining our family's name. Mrs. Montgomery, did it ever occur to you that your brother might have been telling you the truth? He couldn't have. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, I think that anyone who has his record with children deserves more of a chance than that. Uh... Do you, by any chance, still have the forged check? Yes, I have it. Would you have any samples of your brother's handwriting of that period? Yes. I kept all of the papers in the case in a special file. And do you have that file handy? Yes. I wonder if I might borrow it. For what purpose? I'd like to see if a hunch I have about your brother's innocence is correct. <laughs> Mr. Taylor. Oh, hello, Eddie. Here, have a chair. Thanks. Eddie, what are you doing wearing a mustache? Well, I bought a disguise kit, Mr. Taylor, so I could see at the library and watch out for Mr. Norton without him recognizing me. Oh, that's a good idea, Eddie. Well, did you see Mr. Norton? Yes, I did. Oh, when? Well, he didn't show up at all last night. I stayed until the library closed. Mm -hmm. But you told me to stay on it, so I went back this morning. And he came to the library about 10 o'clock. Did you talk to him? I tried to talk to him, but he said he didn't know me. He did? Yeah, so I took off the red wig I was wearing. But he still said he didn't know me. Well, I didn't think he'd do that. Then he turned around and walked out of the library. 
I trailed him, just like I saw a detective do in the movies. Where did he go, Eddie? I wrote down the address, Mr. Taylor. Here it is, uh, 71 Vernon Avenue. Vernon Avenue. That's not far from the settlement house, is it? No, it's only about two blocks. Well, good work, partner. Here's that report from handwriting, Jim. Oh, thanks, Carl. Thanks very much. What's that, Mr. Taylor? I had some papers analyzed by our handwriting experts, Eddie. Are you going to see Pop now? Uh, in a little while. But first, I've got another call to make. You go back over to the settlement house. I'll see you there later on. Good morning, Mrs. Montgomery. Good morning. May I come in? Surely. Thank you. Oh, I have some news about your brother. What kind of news? I took your file of papers down to the handwriting analysis department at our office. Why did you do that? Because I wanted them to study the signature on that forged check and then compare it with samples of your brother's handwriting. I don't understand why you had them do all that work. Oh, Mrs. Montgomery, when this crime was committed, modern scientific handwriting analysis was not used in cases of this kind. So? So today it is possible for experts to examine handwriting and make sound judgment based on their studies. Those experts have just written a report stating that your brother did not forge that check. I can't believe it. Nevertheless, it's true. I know it isn't very polite to speak ill of the dead, but according to our studies, the executor of the estate, Mr. Bryant, is the man who forged that check. Mr. Bryant? That's right. Huh. I don't know what to say. Oh, I think that whatever you do have to say ought to be said to your brother. But he's disappeared. Oh, he was found this afternoon in a rooming house over on Vernon Avenue. Mr. Taylor, I'm not a young woman anymore. But all I have left is my pride. Will you ask Kenneth to come to see me tonight? Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Montgomery. I think your brother has some pride himself. After all, he ran away when he was innocent. No, I'd suggest that if you want to see him, you meet us. Where? Well, if everything goes well, we'll be at the settlement house at 8 o'clock tonight. Who's there? Mr. Norton? That's right. I'd like to talk to you, sir. Come in. Thank you. Mr. Norton, I'm from the FBI. Here are my credentials. What do you want here? I came up here to ask you to come back to the settlement house. I'm sorry, but I don't think that's any of your business. Well, you're quite right, sir. It isn't. But may I ask you a question? What is it? Why did you leave? Oh, I got tired of listening to all those kids yelling and screaming in my ears. Oh, I find it pretty difficult to believe, sir, that... Anyone who spent 30 years with children, as you have, would suddenly get to dislike them that much. Well, uh, maybe that's not the reason. Maybe I've got reasons of my own that I don't want to talk about. Could it possibly be because of your sister? Who told you that? Oh, I'm sorry if I seem to have pried into your affairs, Mr. Norton, but I've been to see your sister. What for? I went there because I was trying to find you. Uh, she told me about that check for $10,000. She did? Yes. And with the aid of the FBI laboratory, we showed your sister that you didn't forge her name. Mr. Bryant was the guilty one. What did you say? I said Mr. Bryant was the one who forged that check. How do you know that? Well, handwriting analysis proved it. You told this to my sister? Yes. Did she believe you? Yes, yes, she did. And she'd like to see you. She'd like to try to make amends. I asked her to come to the settlement house tonight. I don't want to see her. Oh, now, Mr. Norton. Look, it's Christmas Eve. This is no time to feel that way. If she's coming to the settlement house, I won't go back there. Now, look, Mr. Norton, you're not going to let all of those kids down. Now, come on. Put on your coat. If we hurry, we can get there for the beginning of the party. Hey, started the snow just in time. The kids will be happy. Makes it seem more like Christmas when it snows. Sure does. Yeah, here we are. Go ahead, Mr. Norton. Yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. A little late. 
I suppose the party's already started. Yes, I think so. I better hurry upstairs and get into my Santa Claus suit. Oh, it's in Mr. Williams' office. He told me to bring you right in. Oh, fine. You go ahead in, sir. I'll wait for you out here. Yes, yeah, thank you. Hello, Kenneth. Uh, Grace. Mr. Taylor was kind enough to invite me to the party. Yeah, I know. You... You haven't changed much, Kenneth. You... Kenneth. <laughs> Grace. Kenneth, I'm so ashamed. Oh, there. There now. All these years, I falsely accused you. Let's forget it, Grace. It, it's all in the past. Can you ever forgive me? Oh, I already have. <laughs> oh, look, this is no time for crying, Grace. Here's a hanky. Dry your eyes. Thank you. Now, help me on with this costume, will you? Well, well it's a Santa Claus suit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This is my annual job round here. How wonderful. Yeah. I got to really hurry, too. The party's already started. Will you hand me that wig and beard? Surely. Here you are. <laughs> The boys are starting to sing. Yes. I better be getting out there. Well, will you join me at the party, Grace? Of course. Come along. The boys are waiting for you, Mr. Norton. I know. Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas, Mr. Taylor. Soon we will all begin a new year, a year that can bring us happiness, prosperity, and a rich, full life. But those goals cannot be attained without work, without hard work and long concentration. There are a few bits of advice that are applicable to everyone, but there can be no doubt that for each of us, life will be richer and fuller if we follow one set rule, if we live every day during the coming year with the love and kindness in our heart that we have on Christmas Eve. For in that way lies peace on earth, goodwill towards man. Now, let me again remind you that the Equitable Life Assurance Society is offering its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. This helpful chart, which may make such a vast difference in the future happiness and security of your children, is yours for the asking. Phone your Equitable Society representative soon, or send a postcard to the Equitable Society, care of this ABC station. Your request will be forwarded to the nearest representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Meanwhile, your equitable representative wishes you a merry, merry Christmas. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating again wishing you a merry, merry Christmas from the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time to This is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.